Hi, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out You've Got a Friend, the kind of the James Taylor version, although it was written and performed as well by the great Carol King. Um, we're going to be looking at the intro, exactly like the record, uh, the chords and, and a fingerstyle pattern for the verses and the chorus uh, and the bridge. Uh, we're not going to be doing exactly the same finger picking pattern that James Taylor uses throughout the whole song because I'm pretty sure JT never played it the same way twice. I definitely can't sing it and play it the same as him. Uh, so I've tabbed it out actually. It's in the Vintage Songbook. If uh, any of you have got the, my Vintage Songbook, uh, you'll find a, a transcription of the verse and the chorus in there pretty much as accurate as I could get it, although on the original recording there are two guitars, so it still doesn't sound exactly the same as the recording because unless you're uh, you know, recording overdubs and stuff, you're off. Um, so if you want the exact finger picking pattern then you want to check that out but uh, I'm going to go through and tell you what the chords are and a way to play it finger style but uh, it's a very difficult tune to be able to play exactly like the record and especially if you're going to sing it at the same time that's uh, really hard but uh, I would recommend learning to kind of make up your own finger style pattern which is uh, kind of how we're going to be doing it so uh, we're going to start off with uh, going to a close up and looking at the chords as well for those of you that don't uh, feel confident enough to get into doing all of that fancy finger style stuff uh, we need to cap out the second fret we're in regular tuning uh, so let's go to a close-up and check out the chords first of all the first chord that we need is a G chord now if you're going to be doing any of the fancy stuff you need to get into using this third and fourth finger only version it keeps the first and second finger free for doing little twiddles there so we've got the third finger on the third fret of the thicker string third fret relative to the capo of course and little finger third fret on the thinner string <laughs> The fifth string is, of course, just muted by the underneath of that third finger. Probably will be whether you like it or not. So uh, that's the first chord, will be G. Then we move to a C chord. We can leave that little finger down to a C chord, and then we go to this C over D, which just means that we're lifting off the second and third finger. We're leaving our first finger in the first fret and little finger in the third fret. And we're just playing the open D string, the open G, and those top two. Okay, so in the actual intro. You got a little bit of fancy finger style, but if you were strumming it, do C, C with a D bass, G sus4, G. Now here we go, this is G sus4. We're just leaving it, uh, using our uh, two finger G and putting our first finger in the first fret of the second string. That gives us a G sus4, lift it off and we're back to regular G. Okay, now we've got two bar chords. F sharp minor, it's the first one. Second fret, minor chord grip. Then we've got this B7 sus4 to B7. It's a little bit of a funny bar chord, this one. So we're uh, nothing on the thicker string and then we're barring uh, the thinnest five strings with the first finger. Third finger goes down on the fourth fret of the fourth string. A little finger goes down in the fifth fret, relative to the capo, of course, uh, on the second string. Very cool chord, that one. B7 sus4. And the little finger just drops back a fret to get to regular B7. So the chords for the intro are G, two, three, four, C, C over D, G sus4 to G, F sharp minor to B7 sus4 to B7. Okay, just one beat on each of those. Three, four, and then we're into verse one. So note as well that the singing comes in on that B7 sus4. That's it. When you're down, we've got E minor and B7. And you E minor a B7 E minor or E minor 7 if you put your little finger down in the third fret of the second string you get a nice E minor 7 and nothing now this one is an A minor 7 just like a regular A minor lift off the third finger and you've got A minor 7 nothing whoa D7 sus4 in case you don't know that one open D string, 2nd fret, 1st fret, 3rd fret. Okay, D7 sus4, used quite a lot in this tune. Nothing is cool when G, G sus4, back to G for a bar. Then to F sharp minor, 
close your eyes and be seven me. Okay, that part really, the B7 sus4 is just on beat three. So it'll be B7, sus4, back to B7 to E minor. To B7, be there. Back to E minor, E minor 7, to A minor 7, to B minor 7. Okay, so B minor 7, just like a regular B minor, but lift off the little finger our B minor 7 and then we're to the D7 sus4 which we talked about before to the regular D7 so little finger comes off third finger goes down second fret we get our regular D7 so let's run that verse one more time so we're going from when you're which was part of the intro E minor and B7 and you E minor a B7 to E minor 7 or just regular E minor if you want and A minor 7 whoa D7 sus4 is going G G sus4 back to G 2, 3, 4 F sharp minor to B7 sus4 to B7 to E minor B7, E minor, E minor 7, to A minor 7, to B minor 7, D7, sus4, to D7, into the chorus, you just G, out my G major 7. Okay, now this is an interesting one. I'll little have a pause here. So we've got our regular G first of all, using the two-fingered one. Now to get to a G major 7, we're going to move our little finger over onto the second string, still in the third fret, and we're going to use our second finger in the second fret of the thinner string. It is possible just to put your second finger there, but it doesn't quite sound right in this song. You really want to have that little finger down as well. A little harder but it sounds a lot nicer so G out my G major 7 and you see wherever I A minor 7 to D7 sus4 I'll come G6 okay so let's just check up on those A minor 7 we talked about before in the verse D7 sus4 we talked about in the verse but now we got G6 which is just like our two finger G, but lift off your little finger, and by adding in that E note, E relative to the capo, of course I'm talking, uh, it makes it a G6 chord. Okay, it's just very subtle on the record really, so sometimes it sounds, when I'm playing it, I'm playing a regular G there instead of a G6. Doesn't really matter. Uh, so, but let's do G6 then to G major seven, and then we've got two bars of D7 sus4. This is where you get that. If you want to do the little fancy riff, we'll be going through that in a little while. Uh, then back to G to spring, summer, or G major 7. See, you got to do is E minor with a little riff if you want. And I'll see there G with a B bass to C with a D bass to D7 sus4. Wow, a lot of chords going on there. So, G good spring, summer, or G major 7. To see you got to do is E minor. And I'll see that G with a B bass. Hopefully most of you guys know it's kind of G6 with a B bass really. Nothing on the thicker string. Second fret, open, open, third fret open yeah 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 we got the c with the d bass this time we've got open open first open then to our d7 sus4 you got a friend Now there's one other bit that we've got chords for. That's actually the verses and the choruses done. Um, it's the it goes to F. Ain't it good to know 
that she's got a friend when G can sauce for to major seven they'll see you and the F major seven they'll E minor your sword if you A seven oh yeah but don't you let them okay so that bridge one more time we got F probably better to play big F there and then save F major 7 for that kind of second part so ain't it good to know that C's got a friend when G can sus for to G major 7 they'll see you and the F major 7 you they'll E minor 7 your soul if you A7 then lift off that third finger and you get A7 sus2 but D7 sus4 U D7 you just come and then we're on so that's the the bridge that happens a little later on so let's just run one more time the verse and the chorus uh, with the chords along uh, and the intro what the hell let's do let's do that whole little ver intro verse chorus thing and I'll call the chords for you so we're starting off with a G 3 Four G C C with the D bass to G sus four to G F sharp minor B seven sus four to B seven when you're E minor and B seven and you E minor to B seven E minor E minor 7 if you want and A minor 7 whoa D7 sus4 is going G sus4 G 2 3 and then to F sharp minor close your eyes and think of me sus4 back to B7 and E minor will B7 be there Add the 7 if you want to A minor 7 To B minor 7 Your darkest night D7 sus4 To D7 A U just G Out by major 7 And you see Wherever I A minor 7 D7 now come G6 Oh yeah G major 7 To see you again D7 sus4 For two whole bars And then we're G Spring, Summer Or G major 7 Well C you got to do Is E minor And I'll see G with a B bass to C over D to D7 sus4. You've got a G. La -da -da -C. Okay, let's have a look at that intro in a little more detail now. Uh, just before we get too stuck in, I want to just talk about the fingers that we're going to be using to start off with, because finger style. Thumb is mostly going to be taking care of the thickest three strings, and fingers one, two, and three will be sitting on strings three, two, and one. So the thinnest three strings, yeah, that's what they're going to be taking care of to start off with. But we're likely to move that around a little later. But uh, that's a good starting point for these kind of finger style tunes. Um, we got a G chord down, and we're going to be playing sixth string, third string, first string, third string, second string. So thumb one, three, one, two would be the fingers that you're going to use. Okay, so then we're using our second finger on the fretting hand to go down in the second fret of the third string. There, that'll be plucked by the first finger because it's on the third string. Then open B string, of course, played with the second finger because it's that's the one taking care of second string. And then first finger is going to go down there on the first fret. Okay, that's the first bar. 
would recommend that you get that one kind of sorted first. Now after that note, third finger moves over onto the third fret of the fifth string. You'll play that note, then play the thinner string. Then the G string, third string, then the second string. Okay, so the second bar, the note C, which is third fret of the fifth string, thinner string, third string, second string. Okay, and then open D string, third string, open G, and back to the D. So the second bar. Okay, fifth string, first string, third, second, fourth, we remove our third finger from the fretting hand, now we've got the C with the D bass, fourth string, first string, third string, fourth string again. Okay, those first two bars. Okay, worth knows, very even. Definitely want to get that nailed properly first. Okay, the next bar we've got this cool little hammer on thing going. So we're starting off with a kind of a regular G chord. We're using our thumb to play the thicker string and our second and third fingers to play the thinnest two strings. But we're going to hammer the first finger down in the first fret of the second string and then lift it off. One and on there on beat two I'm adding my second finger on the second fret of the third string. One and two and. One and two and. It's really fast hammer on that. Then off. Third string. Thinnest two strings again. Then we've got this sixth string. Uh, third string. First string. Now on the record he definitely plays the thicker string again there. But if you play that thicker string, it makes it really difficult to jump to your F sharp minor. So I normally play, I play the G on this open string rather than this G here, just because it, make, it facilitates that uh, F sharp minor change a lot easier than if you play that. So there you've got a choice whether you want to do it exactly the James way or uh, the slightly cheating Justin way you can choose. See, while I've got that open G string, I've got all of the hand off and I can get to the chord, whereas that's really difficult to get cleanly from there to the F sharp and play two notes. It's just tricky, you know, so using that open G, I reckon it's a good little uh, get around. But anyway, uh, let's take it up to there. Now we've got F sharp minor. Again, this is played differently lots of uh, times I've seen this song played, but uh, this is kind of pretty close to the record. We've got the thumb on the thicker string, and we're playing now, well, our fingers have moved over. Remember I said to you that was, would be starting on the thinnest three strings. Well, at this point you want to move them all over a string. So first finger will be on the fourth string, second finger will be on the third string, and third finger will be on the second string, okay? It's very common to kind of have that block of fingers moving between the two different things if you're improvising in this tune especially. So uh, now we're going to be playing the thumb and the second uh, second finger is going to be playing the third string together then pluck the fourth string here we go so third string and, and the root note pluck the fourth string then play the second string and then the third string again. And then we go to the B7. Okay, so the B7 sus4 rather, so like a regular B7, little finger goes up one, we're going to play the fifth string and the fourth string, and the, um, sorry, and the second string at the same time. And then first finger is going to play the fourth fret of the fourth string. 
little finger goes back, same picking pattern. Okay, so that, that bar. Again, I don't tend to play that exactly the same as that when I'm improvising this tune, but anyway, the whole intro. changing the finger style there a little bit at the end on the F sharp minor. You should have a set pattern. If you want to learn it exactly, you know, exactly right, make a set pattern. But because I tend to improvise this tune a bit, I'll play it different ways depending, you know, and I often play on the B7 because that's how I learned it years ago. So there are little patterns that you tend to kind of fall into. Now, uh, we've already talked about the chords, but let's talk about the finger style a little bit here because it's kind of tricky if you uh, improvising. Um, like I said, you can ch check out the songbook and it'll give you exactly what James played if you're a real, you know, if you're fussy about it. But, uh, you know, really, as long as you're playing the thumb, the root note of the chord on the beat, you're kind of right, you know, so when you're down and troubled and you need a helping hand and nothing There again, I'm just putting in a, a fill that I've... I don't know where I got that film from. I've just been using it for a few years, I guess. Um, you could put any fill that you want there, but you can probably see if I do it again now, it's going to be different. Oh, that reminds me actually as well. On the, on the record, James is playing E minor, B7. He does a little thing where he moves his second finger over to the F sharp. Way back there, so E minor and B7 with an F sharp bass, and the E minor to B7 to E minor, A minor 7, oh D7, so 4 is going right. Okay, it really does it as long as you're getting that root note on the beat. Right, that's the, the big deal. They're getting the bass note on the beat. F sharp minor. Close your eyes and think of me. And there's that little if you want. You can move that little. It's quite nice. As I'm just playing the third, second and third strings on my B7, moving little finger up, moving it back, and then playing the thinnest three strings. E minor. B7 there. Now again, the little E minor, E minor 7, it's not normally played straight to it, it normally plays E minor and then brings in that little finger afterwards, one of his characteristics. A minor, B minor 7. Again, there's little fills because there's two. That's where the second guitar is a real strong entry at that point and does that little, a little kind of scale run there. It sounds kind of nice to do some sort of little, little fill there on the D7 uh, if you want. But you don't have to. Now here, and to call out my name. little riff is kind of iconic so so we're doing thumb on the on the note D one two three four four times the fingers one two and three are playing together and two and three and and then we're playing just the first finger lifts up to play the open B string and then we play the uh, third string where the second finger is still on the second fret Okay, one and two and if you 
one. You did a little hammer on with the first finger. One and two and three and four and and two and three and four. Yeah, it's just a really nice. Again, an obvious thing on the record. So if you listen to the record, that's the easiest way to pick that stuff up rather than try, you know, writing that out becomes pretty complicated. So winter, spring, summer, or fall. All you got to do is call. That's worth checking out. Just a little fill that he does on the word call if you want to want to put that in. Um, it's kind of a blues lick, really. Second finger, second fret of the third string. Slide it up two frets. Play the thinnest string. Slide it back. Flick it off, and then play second fret of the fourth string. Then open A string or open fifth string. Hammer on the second fret. Then play the open D. Then. Second fret on the D string, the fourth string, flick it off, and then play the note B, which is second fret of the fifth string. Okay, that's the lick. You got to do is call. All you got to do is call. Last little bit, you're playing block chords as well. Either block like that or spread. Worth practicing doing that. It's just uh, no, instead of always having a block thing, it can sound nice to have that little roll kind of thing. So uh, as far as the finger style, really, it's it's got to be your call as far as exactly what kind of patterns you do. You know, um, it's all about making sure that you've got the bass on there. And if you listen to the record a lot, you'll kind of naturally start to play some of the right kind of rhythms and stuff. It doesn't have to be continuous. Um, you know, if you're one and two and three, four and one and two and three. There's not really much of a pattern going on there. Some of them I'm falling into patterns that I feel comfortable with myself, but that's kind of part of the journey for you is to fall into comfortable patterns that work for you. Well, I hope I've gone into enough detail to get you started properly with this song. It is kind of a complicated tune, you know, and James Taylor generally, his guitar style is quite complex. And, uh, you know, trying to copy all of those little bits is uh, a challenge, but a, a kind of a rewarding one. So I would recommend if you're, you know, if you're a big James Taylor fan to uh, check out my vintage songbook there and have a look at exactly the transcription there for the verse and the choruses, or transcribe it yourself. You know, now that I've given you the chords, you shouldn't find it probably too difficult to figure out what notes are being played. Um, and it's a really good exercise. You'll learn a lot of uh, kind of new finger style licks that you might want to incorporate into your playing. And, uh, you know, but like I said, it's a, it's a really good skill as well to be able to do it yourself while you're playing it, because uh, James Taylor doesn't play it exactly the same every time. You know, it's, it's a little freer than that. And that's kind of part of the beauty of it, I guess. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll have a good time with it. And I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.